Hi, welcome to Salesforce Training. My name is Tammy, and in this module, we're going to walk you through managing contacts in Salesforce. Now I'm currently logged into Salesforce, and you can see here I'm on the Contacts tab. The Contacts tab is purple, and Contacts is represented by this icon that looks a little bit like a name card. At the top of my Contacts tab, I have an area called View. Views are ways that we can filter information. So here I can actually filter which contacts I want to see. I can view all contacts in Salesforce. I can view all of our employees that are logged into Salesforce. When you're using a view, all you need to do is select the view and then click Go. And based on your filter, you'll be able to see a list of your contacts. Now anytime you have these views, you can sort by any of these column headings. So for example, I'm currently sorting by the person's name, last name first. If I click onto any of these letters, it will filter. So for example, because I'm, or, I'm sorting by organization name, if I click on to D, this will show me any contacts where the organization begins with D. If I want to remove the filter, I simply need to select all. Now when you're searching for contacts, you'll want to search using the advanced search area. Now when you're searching for a contact, you can search by their name meaning their first and or last name. You can also search using their phone number, their mobile, or even their email address. Now I'm going to search for a contact named Jim Rogers. Again, I'm going to go ahead and enter Jim Rogers' name. Then I'm going to click Go. Salesforce will search the contact database and it'll show me any contacts that match with Jim Rogers. From here, I can see Jim Rogers. If I click onto the link, this will bring up Jim's contact record. When I view Jim's contact record, this will show me the details of Jim. We're going to go into more detail of how to create and fill out all these fields for contacts. Now when you're creating a new contact, you can create a contact several ways. By clicking onto the contacts tab, I will see at the top of my screen a new button. A second way to create a new contact is going into the left hand area choosing create new and then choosing contact. The third way is from an organization. So if I'm looking at an organization record and I want to add a new contact who works for that organization, I can simply view it by, by looking at the organization and at the top of my screen, I have these related list links. If I hover over contacts, this also gives me the ability to create a new contact. The nice, way, the nice thing about creating a contact this way is that I know they're being associated to the right organization. So from here, I go from the organization and I create new contact. So from here, you can enter details such as the person's salutation or title, their first name, and their last name. You'll notice here that I've associated it to the right organization. All contacts have to be related to an organization, and that organization already has to exist in Salesforce. Now, I'm just going to go back to a contact, the contact Jim Rogers, and I can do that by going into recent items. Once we open up Jim Rogers' contact details, we can look at some of the fields. Now you'll notice that some of the fields have a faint icon next to it. It's a little question mark, and as you hover over the question mark, it'll bring you a custom tooltip. This will give you additional help for, for certain fields. If we scroll down, you can see here how we ha we're tracking information like Jim's email address, his fax number. We even have a, uh, a field here that will show whether or not the contact is active or inactive. There may be some cases where we want to flag a contact as inactive. They may, we may not, no longer think that they're re relevant to our database, and there's various reasons. If this is the case, you can simply tick this checkbox and Salesforce will automatically prefix the contact name with an X. 
This will make it very easy to omit these contacts whenever we're running reports or doing any type of analysis. From here, we have address information as well as other information. Now, if we want to update any details within Salesforce, all we need to do is double click onto a field. This is an easy way where we can change information. Whenever you double click and use inline editing to update a field, don't forget you have to hit save. If you forget to hit the save button, your changes will not be saved to the database. Another way that we can change information is simply clicking onto the edit button. The edit button will bring the entire contact record up in edit mode. This will allow us to change all fields. And as usual, once we update each of the fields, we then hit save. And scrolling down a little bit further, we also have additional information. Additional information is mostly personal information. This can be handy when we need to remember some personal details of our contacts. So that would include major interests, meaning maybe their favorite sport, etc. Major interest detail can include their club. We also have secondary interests. We're even tracking things like favorite drink, their authority or role, even their birth date and family member names. Down below, we have a description. Description is just free text. So from here, you can enter any free text of information. Once we hit save, there's some additional information that we couldn't see before. So as I scroll down, I can see information such as system information. System information can include who created this contact record, the date and time it was created. Over to the right hand side, we also have a data quality score. We encourage you to add and update as much information in Salesforce as possible. The more data and the more up to date, the higher the data quality score. So keep your eye out for that score. Once you've saved your contact record, you'll also be able to scroll down and see a section called custom links. Custom links has some handy links such as Google Maps. So let's say, for example, you're going out to visit your contact, but you can't remember exactly where their address is. Well, normally we'd have to bring up Google Maps and we'd have to enter the address. But with this quick link under custom links, as I click onto Google Maps, the contact address information will automatically feed into Google. This will make things searching on the Google Maps a lot quicker. Now with the contact record, if we scroll down, we have what we call related lists. This is related information to the contact record above. Now our pages with a lot of data can get quite large. So best practice, whenever you want to view related information, you go to the top of the screen and you can use these hover links at the top. We have a related list information for open activities. Open activities are activities that are going to happen in the future. So that can include calls that you intend to make or meetings that are going to occur. Next to it, we have activity history. Activity history will include things that have already happened in the past. So again, meetings that have taken place or calls that have already been made or even emails that have been sent out. Opportunities, this would show any opportunities that you're currently working on that's involved with this contact. Track marketing campaigns, marketing collateral, and also additional notes and attachments. Now, as we're looking at our contact, we see information including the reports too. So as I mentioned before, in this field, we can track Jim's or your contacts manager or boss. So here, what we can see is that Jim reports to Mark Brooks. As we relate report to's, we have a link next to it that's called view org chart. So as you link your contacts together, Salesforce will build a mini org chart. So as I click onto that link, we'll be able to get a visual and see that Jim reports up to Mark. And Jim has 
a subordinate, Renee, that actually reports to him. Now I want to go back to Jim's contact record. So I can do that a few ways. I can click onto the uh, Jim Rogers contact link here, or under recent items, I can also see Jim's contact link. Recent items will show you the last 10 things that you clicked onto. Now, Salesforce being a customer relationship management tool, we encourage you to track all of your activities in Salesforce. So activities would include any calls that you've made or you've received, any meetings or any tasks. We're also linking activities to our SLP. So let's say Jim has given me a call and he's asked me to drop off some technical manuals or he'd like some technical manuals dropped off to his architect. Now I want to log this call. I can't always remember all the details of the call and that's the purpose of logging them. So to log a call, I can hover over activity history and click log a call. The nice thing about creating activity from the contact record is I will see that the contact is automatically related to this call. From here we can see it's been assigned to us. The subject I can leave as call and for the type I can link it to my SLP activity. So from here I can choose SLP activity 4. Due date we automatically set as today as we're already we're logging the call that's already taken place and for comments this is free text I can add the details or any comments regarding this call then I can click Save now if I actually want to ask someone to drop off these manuals to Jim's architect I can create a task and assign it to someone else so from here, I can go to Open Activities and choose New Task. And from the new task, instead of assigning it to myself, I can assign it to another one of my colleagues. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to Kevin. Subject, I can simply put in Please Drop Off te Technical Manuals. And for the due date, you can even set a due date of when you'd like it to be done. And I can put in comments. We can set the status. We can also set the priority. We can see here it's being linked to Jim as well as his phone number. And we can even send Kevin a notification email. We can also send out a reminder. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And once I click Save, that task will be assigned to Kevin and Kevin will also receive a notification email. Now that task remains related to the contact record. So what that means is that whenever I look at this contact or anyone else who looks at this contact, we'll be able to see under activity history that task that's been assigned to Kevin. That task that's been assigned to Kevin, we can also see the due date and we can also see whether or not it's been completed. Details of comments in my comments area. So when it comes to managing your contacts, we have a few key takeaways. Please ensure that your contact details are updated and fill in as many details as possible. When you're searching for a contact, you can search using the contact's name, meaning first name and or last name. You can also search using the person's telephone number or their email address. And please ensure you log all activities. So that would include your calls, emails, and meetings, and make sure that you link it up to the correct SLP activity. Thank you for attending this recording training session. I hope it's helped. There are additional e-learning courses available, so please take a look at what's online.